I think what we mean when we talk about erotic photography is maybe a bit of a false idea. There's a much wider reflection to be, to be carried around this theme. Erotic photography has been, you know, an ongoing genre of, uh, of the history of photography of the 20th century. I feel like there are some pioneers of fathers or maybe mothers figures. Pierre Molinier, uh, who's the French avant-garde uh, erotic photographer, and so he's someone who I think is, is really important for sure. Uh, but then, yeah, the Japanese photographers are also, they also brought uh, this um, sort of relationship to taboo, I think, and to, uh, to, to really sexual domination that wasn't necessarily so present in French photography. Japanese culture is really divided between what's given away and what's hidden and what's uh, seen and unseen, and it's, it's quite uh, fascinating how much darkness there can be behind the scenes in, in Japanese culture. I mean, we all know that, but it's, it's very pregnant in, in, in photography, I think. The works of Daido Moriyama, who is a really important Japanese photographer, very typical of this uh, of this time of uh, of Japanese photography, 1970s, 1980s. It's, it's also a type of photography that that doesn't necessarily exist anymore so much. It's a bit traditional. Erotic photography has been for so long so connected to the male gaze that it's really time to deconstruct this and bring uh, more women into to light. So Natalia LL is, um, is a really interesting uh, photographer and perform, performance artist who, who comes from Poland in Warsaw in the 1970s at the peak of the communist era. And it's quite difficult for artists to like, express themselves in, in ways that are sort of outside of what the government or what the system expects from them. So imagine a young woman who photographs herself you know, eating a banana, sort of peeling a banana and literally swallowing it with all the evocation it has. And I kind of really enjoy the performance aspect of this photography that's very typical of 1970s avant-garde practices that I was interested in. You know, other artists like Renato Beltman or even Marina Abramovic were also part of this movement, but I think Natalia also plays with, um, with the cliché of the blonde, you know, attractive, seducing young woman, but she totally deconstructs uh, the smell gaze. And that also brings us to a more contemporary relationship, I think, to eroticism. And that's, that's something I also wanted to talk about, to not leave eroticism into the 19th century or the 1920s. I definitely wanted to bring a queer perspective and, and the colored body, Pom Pagi Sepuya, uh, who's you know, black and gay. And his practice is really studio-based, so he, he photographs his friends, lovers, parts of his community uh, and himself, so also a lot of self-portrait. Uh, the presence of what I call endangered bodies, so bodies of color and, and queer bodies as well. It just is the world we live in. Eroticism has this obvious connection with evocation and fantasy and then some images that could uh, evoke pornography, but however for me, pornography is, is, is a market. It's something that has no connection with any subtlety or evocation or sort of like what, what erotic photography can, yeah, can bring. Yeah, I particularly wanted to, to bring someone like Genesis Bear Peorage into the, the selection for so many reasons. I mean, Jenny is someone is an incredible artist as a musician. And then there's something that really attracted me in Jen's practice is that it's it's about love. It's a, it's a project of love. And uh, of course, some of the, of the images have a pornographic uh, aspect because it's sexuality, it's sex. Eroticism is also about love, you know, it's also a very romantic approach, it's, it's, it can be, I mean, it has so many different levels, it can be, as I said, suggestion, representation, fantasies, it can be sexuality, maybe somewhere pornography, but also it can be love.